I was going to say that most of you know me from church, but what you may not know is that I have a traumatic brain injury. And that's a, let me sort of explain what that is. Say this tennis ball is your brain. It's kind of round, right? Kind of soft and squishy. And this is your skull. This is kind of hard and break. When you have a traumatic brain injury, your brain goes inside your head, of course. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> what happens in a traumatic brain injury is that your brain gets shaken up like this, but it can't get outside of the skull, of course. Or if you did, we'd be here. But this is how it works. It's really shaken up. And this, uh, this is my brain got really scrambled up here, for sure. You're really good, Larry. <laughs> okay. And um, some of these props I have are from, I used to give this bunch of the same talk to the party program, which is teach, you tell grade 10 kids not to fool around, do risky things. So that's, that's why I got some of the props here. It takes, it takes me a little while to read this approach. So one of the things that I'm here to do is to tell you all the, all the good things our Lord has done for me. Because believe me, because I believe in Him, because I wouldn't be here at all. Trust me. Well, maybe here, maybe, but I'm not too much here at times. <laughs> you, can, you can use it as a bit of a, you can blame it on here. Oh, that's my brain injury. <laughs> so, you get, let's, get away, let's get away with things. <laughs> So I'll tell you how I got my, my head injury. Um, I used to work up I used to work up, up at the college. They say I was manager of the IT department, but I'll just, just explain that later. At lunchtime, I used to go up and ride my mountain bike up in the community forest trails, and I must have been ripping down some hill, and somehow I fell off and I crashed into a rock. My head crashed into a rock. So you see, it's, this is cracked. So I hit it so hard, it actually cracked this thing. These things are pretty tough, right? So I actually cracked it. So I passed it around. If I hadn't been wearing that, I would have, my brains would have been all over the rock for sure, of course. <laughs> and uh, I was lying, I was lying beside up, up in this community forest and uh, by this rock, and nobody knew I was there because they thought I'd gone to Kimberley for the afternoon. Oh, Larry's gone up to Kimberley. He'd be back later. So I would have stayed there probably forever almost. But then our Lord, this is one of the first time our Lord started to help me, was that he, he convinced this guy, he used to go up every day for a walk, to go back a different way. So he went back a different way and he found me. Otherwise he would have been there forever. But uh, anyways, he, he got a hold of the police, the RSMP. The RSMP came up to me, come up, to start looking at me. And I, was a, a, I didn't have any idea of me, because before I go riding, I take my idea and put it in the locker at the college. So I was like, I was there with John Doe and they got me. So anyways, they use their sort of investigative things. So they look at the bike and said, that's a nice bike. This has got a sticker on here. So let's phone Jerick's to use bought one of these bikes. So they phoned Jerick's and he said, oh, that must be Larry Farmer. He's about the only one in town that has one. So anyways, they go up to the, went up to the college and I feel sort of a little bit bad, but I had to get my boss, had to come, she had to come down to the hospital and identify me. So, oh yeah, that's Larry Farmer. And so they put me on a jet and flew me to Calgary because they didn't have, have the equipment here to look after me here. So I flew to Foothills Hospital in Calgary. And I was there for uh, two or three months, I think, or maybe three or four, I'm not sure. I was in a coma. There's two types of comas. A sleeping coma, where you're like, you're asleep, you sleep, right? Your eyes are closed. And there's a waking coma, where you awake, but you can't, re re you can react, but you can't do anything, people say. So if somebody goes like this, your eyes will blink. 
But somebody said, lift your left hand, nothing would happen. Because like, you get my brain, couldn't really uh, 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 deal with that. So eventually, uh, eventually I came out of the wake sleeping coma, and they took me, sent me up to Pinoka, which is the place where they uh, do brain, uh, brain injury sort of rehabilitation. So I was up there for a few months. And, um, oh, I should say, for a while I was in a wheelchair, and uh, it wasn't because of anything that happened to me during the accident, uh, incident, but um, I was, um, I just, babies, babies learn how to walk, right? They learn how to walk. Well, I forgot everything, so I forgot how to walk. So I, so it's when you say, give a walk, go, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, anyways, they used to, they used to take me down to, down to the physio room. They walk me around, teach me how to walk in. So one day, uh, they finished. I usually came with my wheelchair, took me back to my room. At this day, there was no wheelchair. So I looked around and I said, "Nurse, where's my wheelchair?" He said, "We didn't want, we didn't want to put any pressure on you, but this is your graduation day. If you did okay, you never get the wheelchair back again." Yeah. So I never did. I never did. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's see if I look here. Oh. So I ended up with a traumatic brain injury. So there are three main things that happened to you that are sort of a result of it from it. One is I have pretty bad vision. I can't drive because I have bad peripheral vision. I failed the test anyways. <laughs> so I'll never, I can never get a nice driver's license. I don't think I really want one either. <laughs> the other problem was balance. I have bad balance because you think you're balanced in your ears, right? So that's kind of messed up. So I like being standing up here so I can grab onto something. That helps. <laughs> Just standing by itself. Like when we're asked to go up to up in front of church for uh, some blessing and that, I find it really hard because I have to start to stand there by my on my own. So I can lean up against people or something. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the, other, the other problem I have, like I said, with vision is a bad problem of mine. So I got three vision problems. One is I have a, a, a blind spot in this part of my eye, but it's for detail only, because I can see, if I'm on, a, a, like this, I can see there's no black spot here, where my blind spot is, but if there's something there, I used to walk my dog, I could hear him walking beside me, right here, but I couldn't see him, because he's in my blind spot, then I see his nose come on my blind spot, and his little head. So it's a blind spot for detail only. The other thing is I have a lot of double vision, because you have two eyes, right? And as it goes up to your brain, your brain puts me into one, one, one vision, right? One thing. So I have a lot of time my brain doesn't quite work, doesn't have time to put two of them back together. So I see a lot of, I have a lot of double vision. And uh, so a lot of time I never know, now is that the real one or is that the fake one? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's in the middle. Sometimes it's in the middle, right, too. Yeah. And uh, the other problem, other problem, my main problem I have is memory. Uh, some people say, oh, my God, I got a kind of bad memory. Mine's really bad. Uh, I have a problem with short-term and long-term memory. Uh, the first, 20, first 10 years before I got hurt, that's about 97% gone. That's gone. The 10 to 20 years before I got hurt, oh, there's maybe 80% there, 20% has gone. So I remember a few things about when I first started at the college, working at the college. Uh, nothing later though. When they say I mean, they say I was manager of the IT department, but I have no memory of that because that was too close to when I got hurt. What's an IT? Uh, computer services, sorry. Computer services. That's what they used to call it. That's what they used to call it, anyways. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. That's okay. Yeah, okay, good. I don't use that term for too often, so. <laughs> um, so, anyways, my memory that memory is pretty bad. So that's short term and long term. So short term, like I can see, somebody can say something to me, 10 minutes later, I have completely no idea. Like they'll they introduce themselves, and 10 minutes later, they are totally gone. I have no idea who they are, what their name is. I'd walk past them on the street and never recognize them. I must say that a lot of people here are, so I sort of code people, uh, whether or not they can, I can remember them or not. It's kind of a career thing. I code them, I give them a one if I remember their name. So Ron Short gets a one. For his name, right? <laughs> and I give him a piece, he, other people uh, a one, if I can remember what they look like. So a lot of people sort of look like 
So I just give them one. So a lot of people are one ones, but most people are zero zeros. I have no idea who they are, what their names are. <laughs> so I'm sorry. If I walk past you and don't, if I walk past you and say, don't, don't do anything, that's no problem. I just, just got up here. Problem up here. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. There's a, I must admit that, well, I don't know what I guess you should admit it, but anyways, I find pretty women sort of easier for me to remember for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why, but. It's a one <laughs> Yeah. It's men's breakfast. That's right, okay, okay, yeah. And my double vision is good because I get to see twice as many pretty girls as you guys do. <laughs> That's one good thing about my injury. You see twice as many pretty girls as you guys do. <laughs> um, see, I forget so many obvious things. If people say something to me, and it's gone. But the one thing I never forgot is that Jesus died for our sins, and that I don't, and I don't forget that He died for them. As Hebrews 12 verse 2 says, we do this to keep our eyes on Jesus. And I try to keep my eyes on him all the time. At times it's, uh, you know, as I said, it's pretty mixed up here. I think our Lord helps me when I, helps me remember things that are important, so. So I guess, I guess Ron's very important because I remember well, him, his name, and what he looks like, so. <laughs> oh, another thing I do, I've already found a lot of, and uh, I think, our Lord doesn't really expect, expect us to sit back and say, I say, well, our Lord can do everything. He'll, do, he'll fix me up or he'll help me. But I, I'm a, I use this recorder. So if you, see me, if you see me talking to the recorder, I record it. And uh, one good habit, one good thing that I've actually done is when I get home, I go to my computer and I replay all the messages on here and type them into my computer. So then I can look them up and say, I'll go look breakfast. So I'll go, take me, if I turn to figure out what I did this morning, I'll take them breakfast. And I'll come up with a wings breakfast, okay? Mm. Awesome. So it works pretty good though. For this, otherwise I'd be lost for sure. Um. Mm -hmm. I was just saying, most of my, in, my injuries or problems I have are the same as everyone else's. Mine just happen more often and more severely. You say, I was right on the tip of my tongue, but what, what did I want to say? You say that maybe once a week or so? I might say that two or three times a day, so. <laughs> so I must remember that things are not bad, but because of my brain injury, they're just not there. So I, I think, I think, well, I'm not, I don't know. I think, well, I should be saying something about our Lord, but He knows, He knows that, He knows I have a problem, and He makes, He makes an acceptance for that, because He's a loving God, and He helps us. No matter what, He helps me. Yeah. Yeah. So I shouldn't be here at all. Why, as I said, my brain should be up on the rock of the community for us. <laughs> but, uh, but our Lord had things for me to do. And as 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8 says, And God will generously provide all you need. He has provided what I need to sort of do things like, oh, like walk, come to here, come here, talk to you guys, actually be able to remember things like that. And uh, this afternoon I'll be going to the SBC because that's one of the things actually our Lord really has helped me, let me enjoy. Because my emotional, I can tell you about my, my emotional flatline. That is, I have no emotions. They're flatlined through zero. So I just don't have, things that make ha people happy are just nothing to me. Or things, if things, sad things are nothing to me, either, which is good. Because good. when my father passed away last year, it was just like a fact. It was a fact. Same way as two and two equals four, my dad passed away. That was that fact. No emotions at all. Hmm. But I do have some low emotions. There's little bumps in my flat line. So one of them is being with dogs or playing with dogs. Because the Lord created the dogs for us. So I'm sort of helping, by helping the dogs, I'm sort of helping uh, my, what I feel for the Lord. And uh, the other thing that I, really, that I really can feel is that 
little Adora uh, from church, from church here. Whenever I see her, I feel, I smile, and I feel good when I see her. That's the thing that came from our Lord for sure, because other other kids are just the little like the nice, nice kids are nice, but when Adora, <laughs> but Adora makes me smile and feel good. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you know, Landon's special for me. For some reason, I remember remembered his name right away. So I Landon's special to me. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You're a zero. <laughs> well, he, he's a zero one maybe. I re I recognize him, but I always forget his name. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. As I was talking about Adora, I was thinking of Psalm 16, verse 3, and it says, I take pleasure in them. And I know that our Lord and I take pleasure in little Adora. Because he's the one thing that allowed me, he actually allowed me to feel good about. Yeah. And uh, we shouldn't, like you said, we said before, we shouldn't sit around and moan because something bad's happened to us. So we should always try to look on the bright, bright side of things, right? So I look at I look at my brain injury and I think I have a very memory problems really bad, but there's no TV repeats for me. <laughs> <laughs> when I lived with my sister, I'd say, "Oh boy, Sue Thomas is on tonight." She said, "You saw that last night." I said, "Doesn't matter to me." <laughs> <laughs> but I remember some tiny I remember a, a tiny part of something though. See, one of the one of the actors actors in the movie show has has um, uh, has French toast for breakfast. So I'll see that in the show and say, "Oh, I've seen this one before." But who gets killed? Who did? Who did? No idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, well, the bad things are, of course, my memory problem. That's pretty bad because I just never know whether something is I remember or I think I remember it, or maybe it happened to me before I got hurt. So. That's, that's one of the bad things. The other thing is, of course, is um, that I can't work. Can't work. I used to work at the college, so I can't work after now. Now I'm, a good, I'm on a good disability pension through the college, so our Lord is looking after me. So he allows me to get the, bring the money in, and I give it back to the various places. God blesses you. Yeah. And one time, one time I started thinking, why should I give a lot of my, more, more of my money to our Lord? But my sister said, don't give your money away to her at all the time. So I think it maybe was the Lord speaking through her. Because now what I do is I pay for everything in bills. So when I get to change, I, get, I always make, make a little collection and we get a coin roll and then give it back to some, to some place, some charity. My favorite charity is the Audrey Hepburn Children's Fund. And I'm a big fan of her. I'm a big fan of her because, well, she was so pretty too. <laughs> <laughs> But she could have used that prettiness and stuff to use to live the typical Hollywood lifestyle, right? Big parties and fancy things. But instead, she used her fame and beauty to raise money to, to give to ch children that really need their money. That's one of the things I actually feel good about giving money. Other times it's something I just know is good, but I actually feel good when I give money to Audrey. And, um, I think that's it. As I mentioned, we must partner with the Lord, our Lord. So I said, but this helped me to partner with Him. Because, well, we just, as I said, we can't sit back and let, say, oh, our Lord will do it. We have to partner with Him, so that's good. He, though He can do all, He wants us to work, to work with Him. Something, sometimes, we do things that aren't for us, but if He wants us to do them, we should. A lot of times I think, why should I, why does the Lord want me to do that? But he, he never makes mistakes, so what he just says is good. So, I think that's, I think that's it. I read it read anyways. Um, any questions? Yeah. Don't remember, remember, I have, a, I have an emotional flat line, so you can't embarrass me yeah. by asking me a question, because it won't, there's nothing there <laughs> to embarrass, so. Any questions? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Oh, I'm, uh, 
That's always a problem with birth, how people are. I started thinking, one of them was a born 1954, so I'm be 60 in May, yeah. So I'll be 60 in May, yeah. Yes, yeah. When did your accident happen? Oh, uh, it happened in 2001, yeah. And um, one thing I can't remember, I can't remember much about it, but I can't, one thing I can't remember is that I decided to divorce from my wife about a month before that, so maybe that was going through my head and sort of shook me off, caused me to crash. But um, I have no memory of my marriage at all, at all. I had, <laughs> but, but I do remember my ex-father-in-law, he's passed away now, he was a good godly man for sure. He was a federal judge who was away up there. He was a good man though. Yep. I sort of, I, he's one, one thing, few things that I, from about 10 years before I heard, that I sort of remember and feel good about, because he was a good godly man. Yeah. Mm. Uh, no, I don't think, I think maybe we tried, I don't know, no idea. It's, it's one of the things that's lost. <laughs> yes? Have you ever ridden horses? Uh, no. Oh, that was, I know, it was from, actually I started walking too, too early. My bones are really, still really soft and bendable. So actually, actually they bend from the weight of walking. So I, that's one reason for walking too early. You shouldn't do it? I thought maybe you were a cowboy. No, no. A lot of people think I was at first. They see my legs, oh, he's a cowboy. But no. Did you know Jesus before you got your injury? Actually, I, I'm pretty sure that I accepted our Lord when I was in public school. Uh, I forget what year it was. Well, maybe the mid-60s. We had a teacher that was a very good, godly woman. She might have sort of inspired me to accept Jesus, but then I just drifted away like many do. I was so, so, I was so, far, so far away from him. Uh, why he took me back, I don't know, but he loves us, so he takes us back. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. Larry, explain to everybody your transition when you came from Pinocchio. From after, after this area, how you progressed to where you are now? Oh, uh, at your sister's place, and then oh, you're home now. Well, from Pronka, they allowed me after a while to go back to just live with my sister in Fort Steele. So I lived back, went back, and lived with her for oh, for a while. But then, because I couldn't drive, and it's just too far out of town, so a lot of things I missed things because I just couldn't get to them. So I moved into town, and they they said it was okay for me to get an apartment by myself. It's good because they also have uh, meals meals at home, so they actually get delivered meals to me. And um, because I have no taste, I have no desire to eat things at all. I, uh, except for your breakfast. Except for breakfast, yep. And um, lunch and supper are simply jog exercise. There's nothing to it. <laughs> There's nothing to it. People look forward to it and talk, talk about food and stuff like that, but it's nothing to me. <laughs> but I try, try. I know it's. I know our Lord wants to provide food to everyone. So that's one of the reasons why Audrey Hepburn Fund is so important to me, because she gives food to kids that don't have it yeah. and really want it. Me, it's. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Larry, share with everybody what you do at the Green Home when you oh. um, I'm not sure. I think the Lord must have put it on my mind that I should volunteer for things that I can actually do. And one of the things they got me to do was down to the Green Home. So I go down to the Green Home and call Bingo twice a week. Yeah, so then people get pretty excited about that. And I also play cards with one of my fellow one of the residents, uh, Roy, and uh, a lot of times I can't understand what he's saying, so I just go, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no idea what he's saying. <laughs> but he's, he's pretty good, for, he's fairly old, but he's still pretty good playing crib, though. He gets, counts the cards up, uh, no problem at all. And so uh, that's, that's good to go there, yeah, for sure. But, uh, and of course, when we, when we have uh, church service there. I like to go there because then I get to see uh, uh, Mary Lou Price and uh, uh, her her son goes to our church. So I think there's something special about Mary Lou. I'm not sure why, but I just feel good. Again, I feel good when I see her because I know she's a good godly woman. But she's in bad parts now, but she's good. Yeah. Mm. I think she's the one one because when I see her come into the room, I say, oh, that's Mary Lou. Mm. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> and you do, uh, when, when you've seen that, that you, you pray, mm -hmm. and the uh, scripture is important to you too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you just kind of talk about those two 
Okay, well, one of the problems with my memory is that I know people should should uh, try and remember or memorize parts of the Bible, but for me it's like pretty well gone. Unless I remember it 20 or 30 years ago, then I can remember parts of it. But, uh, what was, that, what, was the, what was the other part of it? What you're getting at is where you come like the city hall. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think that's going to be. How does the Lord give you that? Well, I think I just sort of, I just sort of suddenly I'll be reading something and oh, that's a good point we should do for the city hall prayer. So I'll sit and I'll write it down, I'm reading along, so I can edit it in front of me so I can read it, otherwise it's probably gone. I remember a few, a few verses I've memorized, but uh, I think the only one I've remembered, remembered recently been able to memorize was John 3.17. Uh, God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, but to save it through him. Yeah. That, okay. That's one of the ones that Lord, <laughs> that's one of the ones that Lord taught me to remember. Other ones are just, just go out of try for weeks to remember, but they're not there. Hmm. Other questions then? Well, thanks very much for allowing me to tell you my story tell me how, and tell you how the Lord has looked after me, and he has so much. Yeah. Thank you.